Pam, Kate, I'm Lauren, Caitlin, and uh, we're the Catherines, and you're watching Live in Limbo. Doesn't matter that you and I just met. with Live in Limbo, and today I am joined by the Catherine, Kate, Lauren, and Caitlin. How are you all doing today? We're great. Good. <laughs> We're very good. How are you? I am great. You are here in Toronto promoting your new album. We are. It just came out on January 13th to Bring Me Your Heart. What's the reception been like? It's actually been surprising for us because we expected it to be kind of nothing. And then we have one song that's doing really well on Spotify, so... Feels very good. Yeah, we feel good. Are you hearing back from a whole bunch of people you maybe not have heard from lately? All your friends and family coming yeah. out of the woodwork? We played a release show in Vancouver last Friday, and so it was really fun to see everyone and actually give out some of the physical copies. And, yeah. and it, was everyone asking for your autographs? A few. A few. There were a few. Mostly our moms. <laughs> yeah. Hey. We got to sign. I signed a neck. I signed a neck, too. Same no babies? Neck? No babies yet. <laughs> no babies yet. <laughs> uh, all right. On this, on your new album, you actually have a, an interesting working relationship with the group, the Mounties, because you have Steve Bass, who co-wrote Primitive, and Hawksley Workman, the great Hawksley Workman, uh, worked on Cherry. How did that partnership come from? That was really cool. That actually was the only song, Cherry Lips is the only song we recorded in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And that was with Tino Zolfo, who's a producer, and then Hawksley. And we were all just sitting in a room together, and the song kind of just came came about <laughs> it was really cool though and then Hoxley added like this crazy bass line that we like needed to keep in there so if you listen really carefully there's like it's like a super melodic bass line which you don't usually hear which is one of my favorite parts of that song and that was a Hoxley signature <laughs> he can kind of do everything can't he he really can that guy's insane yeah and then that night after recording we went to see his show that he was doing at the time in Toronto and it was like a one-man band show and it was insane he just went across the stage and he had lipstick and He's, he's crazy. I love that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's really nice, too, which is the most important thing. Good. That's good to hear. Um, now, back in November, you actually premiered one of your videos with Live in Limbo for Better Off Now. Uh, and you actually talked about how it took you six months to write. Was it because the, the subject matter was a little tough to talk about because it's about a breakup or is it more about a writer's block sort of thing? Well, I mean, wh what happened was that we started it in the summer and came up with the chord progression and like the ooh, 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 ooh hook, but then like we didn't do anything else because it stumped us completely. <laughs> so that was all we had. And then we had both gone through breakups and we met up six months later, just kind of in the midst of our sadness and pulled up that song and it, it made a lot more sense at the time. And so it just kind of came about, came about then. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you also recorded a track-by-track -track commentary for Spotify. Yeah. Uh, how did that feel, kind of having to go in depth about every single song, not only the writing process, but also the recording process? Yeah. It was really fun. For me, at least, I, the songwriting and the recording is my favorite part of it. So it was, it was cool to talk about because it's something that I yeah, get really excited. Yeah, it's a story excited. that you kind of want to tell. Yeah, exactly. Do you feel at this point there's a bit of a disassociation between you as a writer and talking about the actual songs now that they're finished? Well, I mean, we finished this record a long time ago. It's been like a three-year process releasing it and doing singles. So in that way, like a lot of the songs were written end of high school. And now we're, we're 21. She just turned 19. And so I think like when you're that age, you feel like you change a lot year to year. So it's a little weird going back and being like, oh, yeah, someone broke my heart when I was 16. And that's what that was about. But I feel nothing about that person anymore. And so you've able to properly digest all the subject matter. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, exactly. But some of them still ring very true, I think, even at this age. Yeah. Uh, Lauren, how does spending a lot of time with your sister, you know, both traveling, <laughs> working, how does that affect your personal relationship? Um... It's, it's pretty good, actually, like, to be honest. It's not bad. We've always been pretty close and honest with each other, so if there's an issue, we work it out right away. Painfully, Painfully honest. But it's it's a working relationship, and Caitlin's kind of part of it now, which is weird. Like I got adopted into the yeah, family. Yeah, there's three of us, not two. Yeah. Do you ever feel like you need to be the mediator? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. She's kind of like Switzerland. Yeah. Whenever they fight, I kind of feel like I need to be like, guys, just not now. Like, wait, a little, at least. Kind Until of we're thing. off stage? Yeah. We're usually pretty we good, good about that. No, we're, we're good about that. We're good. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we always try and like powwow before and make sure we're all doing good before yeah. we hop on stage. So that's but important. 
but it'll be like on the way to something they'll start a little bicker that won't really stop and i feel like i need to get in there and parent them a little bit <laughs> well it's good that you like each other because i'm sure it would be pretty difficult to write record and tour together if you didn't absolutely <laughs> <laughs> um now you seem to take a lot of your inspiration from not only your own life but writing songs about the other girls in the group how do you go about mining information to write songs is it just having conversation be like hey do you mind if i write about this <laughs> yeah i mean I'll, i mean it's very influenced by the emotions that are going around in my head and i think now that we've spent so much time together and i guess we are sisters that's what it feels like i feel the same emotion that they are if they're going through something hard and so i think that it just comes out of like that closeness and so like if if one of them is going through a breakup we're very a part of that sort of process and sadness and so i think the songs just come out of you know the emotions that are being felt at the time that's good to hear yeah. and so it's a bit of a therapeutic process then oh big time yeah it's the only way at least for me i have a really hard time talking about my feelings well like like it's it's a problem but i can process them into a song that's like the only way i really deal with them as an artist at least you can do that right at that's least, the best yeah, way yeah at least it's very therapeutic i need it if i'm not writing i go crazy <laughs> <laughs> literally listening to the album you know there's so many different influences all across it and so many different genres that you seem to pull from and no two songs really sound a lot of like so what do you feel makes a catherine song a catherine song mm, i think do you want to answer that? What? <laughs> I think now what has become our signature is the three voices. And more and more, I think especially for the next record, now that we've kind of come into this three girl group and gotten comfortable with it, and we, we've started adding a lot of harmony. So I think that our signature is probably the three part harmony. And we each have, we have similar voices, but they, they each have their own little tone and, and sort of vibe style. So yeah, definitely, it's, I think it, I'd say that's definitely the signature. And as far as your influences go, do you each pull from different things or do you all mm -hmm. really listen to the same sort of music? Not at all. No. Um, yeah, Lauren is like a classic rock girl. So she yeah. doesn't like anything that goes like above the 80s. <laughs> she hates Not it. Not even the 80s. Yeah, like I'm staying you're like 70s. a 60s, 70s. Yeah, that's kind of big it. time. Right. Yeah, and then I like, I in high school at least, like what this record was influenced was a lot of alts and sort of folk almost music, sad, something, anything depressing with piano and strings where the guy who's singing it sounds like he's crying at the same time is like, it's the kind of music I like. And then you, I'm like leaning to, I seem to only listen to sad music right now, but I can appreciate most types of music. I'm kind of all over the map. <laughs> a jack of all trades. Yeah. Well, that's good. Uh, is there a song from this album that you maybe have not been performing before that now that the album is out, you're really excited for people to hear live? Yeah. For me, it's the title track. Oh, yeah. yeah. To Bring You My Heart is one of my favorites. It's like a very sultry song that is dark and, and moody. A little, a little yeah. yeah. So oh, that's okay. been my favorite, um, <laughs> my favorite new one to release, at least. And it sounds bigger when it's live. Like, to me, at least, like, when yeah. I listen to it on the record. You can different. totally jam out. And there's strings parts. Like, we, the record is very strings influenced mm -hmm. because yeah. I was a strings nerd in high school. So it's, I love when we can get like a cello up on the stage and just it's like jamming out with that big string section sound. I have to say the title track is one of my favorites yeah. because I really like your harmonies. They really pull through and shine on that one. Thank Maybe you. more so than some of the other tracks. There's even like an opera singer at the end of that track. It's gorgeous. Is like, yeah, I loved her. Yeah. Oh, so that's probably my fave. Uh, what kind of goals do you have now for 2017 now that the record is out? Because yeah. you said it's a three year process. So what do you have to work for now? Oh, we're hoping to tour. We really want to tour. I mean, that's what I really want to do. We were talking about like just getting ourselves a van and driving across Canada and doing our own little hippie, hippie tour, which we're really excited for if that can happen. Yeah, I mean, this is a like I think this is a goal of ours, just being here today in Toronto, yeah. not being in Vancouver. And I'm actually going to stay. I decided like kind of on a whim, so I'm moving to Toronto oh. for a couple months. I'm just going to see. I don't have a return flight, so I'm going to write, and that's my goal. <laughs> I think is to like start producing the next record because now that this is out, we're like full steam ahead on on new music, which I'm excited to play with. So you already have ideas of what you want to do for the next record? Yeah. Any, yeah. any songs I've started writing or is it more just ideas percolating There's been in your head? a ton because it's been three years since this record was done. So in that there's like hundreds of songs, but I think, yeah, it's going to, we're going to see. I, yeah. I still want to leave it open to be able to evolve a lot in the next little while now that we're seriously focusing on writing new stuff. So 
Yeah. Are there any specific producers or something that you want to work with on this? That's why I'm here. Yeah? I, I think I want to delve into the Toronto producer scene, so... <laughs> Yeah, I'll find out. Call I don't know yet. Call Boxley, see who he knows. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm interning with Tino and his studio, so I'm just going to be around and sort of soak it all in. Nice, that should be a lot of fun. Well, thank you so much for, for joining me today. Uh, the Catherine's new album is out now. It's streaming. You can buy it. It's everywhere, isn't it? We even found it in HMV down really? by Eaton Center. We oh. were shocked. That was, that was a nice surprise. Yeah. Pleasant. That must have been a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a cool moment. And also, special thank you to Liberty Commons at Big Rock Brewery for hosting us here today. It's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much, and good luck with everything. Thank you.